You know, you uh, never know quite what it means to live life one day at a time until you're in a position to do so. Hello Internet, this is Boards, and this is my 2015 year-end review. And as far as I'm concerned, okay, 2015 can take a flying leap at a rolling donut. Now, this might run a little long, and it's more serious than entertaining, but it's good record keeping and parts might be informative and I just plain need to say some stuff. Now I'll be talking about the following topics. 1. Why 2015 was genuinely, without exaggeration, the worst year of my entire life. 2. The things, people, all that sort of stuff in 2015 that helped keep me going. Do you ever hear the one about the push button who went to the psychiatrist because he was suffering from depression? Yeah, yeah, I, I told you it wasn't going to be very entertaining. Anyway, like millions of others in the U.S., I live with depression and anxiety. And you know what? Depression has a powerful stigma, and uh, it's hard to make some people believe that it's real, or to have some people to understand it. So the other day I was telling my nine-year-old son that his dad's life is sometimes a bit like Sonic and Sega racing. My life is fairly fast-paced. It begins about 6.30 a.m. and it doesn't really end until about 9.30 p.m. and then maybe I get about an hour and a half, two hours of free time. Most of the time I'm on that racetrack, controlling where I go, avoiding obstacles, drifting through the curves, but sometimes I press the right buttons, but I drift the wrong way, sometimes crashing into a wall and losing coins. Sometimes I can adjust from the crash, but sometimes it just gets worse. Then it's more like Sonic Racing Transform. Now I'm in this tunnel, in this boat, with wonky controls. There's no exit for a long time. Or you can see the exits, but no matter how much you move the stick or press the buttons, you are stuck in this tunnel. This dark tunnel. In extreme cases, doing the simplest thing seems impossible. The exits all but disappear. There's only darkness, fear, dizziness, pressure on your head pushing in, pressure on your head pushing out, your chest being crushed by an immense force. So this even breathing becomes a laborious, deliberate task. Over the years, I developed a host of coping mechanisms. Some of them were useful in deflecting bouts of depression or anxiety. Others were used to abate the effects if they were unavoidable. But I live in a home environment of emotional oppression and sometimes even antagonism, where Increasingly over the last 18 months or so, the time and ability to engage in my coping mechanisms has been interfered with or sometimes outright sabotaged. And I've gone a whole year where most days of the week I'm effectively a single parent. Work life and personal life stressors cascaded upon me day after day, week after week. Under normal circumstances, I would just deal with them, I mean, even oftentimes turning the stress into you stress, which is positive stress that helps you move in positive directions, get things done, but not last year. I reached an extremely low point, a point I hadn't ever reached in my life, and a doctor prescribed me some antidepressant anti-anxiety meds, which I took for about four or five days. They made me sleepy all day. They gave me a headache all day, and they constipated me. And there were a couple other things I don't remember, but you know what? No, thank you. Thankfully, due to a week-long holiday and uh, some accumulated vacation and sick time, I was able to put my job on hold for about three weeks. Reevaluating what I wanted in my life and what I wanted out of my life. Now, depression isn't necessarily sadness, okay? However, when you are already struggling with depression, when sad things happen, you tend to feel it more deeply. Now in 2015, three people who I had personal connections to, one, well, extremely personal, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. Anyway, they, uh, they died. Cindy Taylor in the Outreach Department at RCC was a person I worked with closely and remotely for 15 years, roughly. She strived tirelessly for the sake of the student body and rarely said no to something that would benefit them. Then one Friday we're talking about a new project for student success and over that weekend I learned she suddenly died. 
When I was a student at RCC, I was in the community college honor society slash club called Alpha Gamma Sigma, sometimes called AGS. One of the advisors was an instructor named Ron Yoshino. Ron was a man who respected integrity and had very little time to waste on people who had no integrity. Although I was never in his classes, I got to know him well through various activities and events in AGS and he hosted several of those at his house. Then later, when I returned to RCC as an employee, I got to know him on a completely different level. When a person you respect, a person you consider a mentor, when that person openly and actively refers to you as a colleague, it's an amazing honor. Ron died only a couple of years into his retirement. And lastly, in November, my mom was diagnosed with terminal cancer and given about six months to live. It wound up being closer to about five weeks or so. Her and my stepdad chose home care because by the time the doctors had discovered it, it had reached the point where uh, really the only thing left was pain management. And my mom did not want to die in a hospital. Now I have a, a small, small family, but we do get together for various holidays and uh, my stepdad asked if I would host Thanksgiving this year because uh, he and my mom, you know, they, they, you know, they couldn't. We thought my mom would only be able to stay for uh, an hour or less, but uh, instead, actually, she she wound up staying for it was, it was like two hours, maybe a little more, and um, and it was really nice. Around December nineteenth, her condition took a, a, a nosedive. By December 20th, her digestive system started to shut down and she was rarely conscious. Uh, by the next day, it was evident that the end was uh, near. So I packed my son and wife up so they could say a final goodbye. We left that night and sometime the next morning, uh, well, to quote her obituary, she passed away peacefully at home on December 22nd, 2015, after a brief illness. She was surrounded by love, her treasured pets, and the sound of peaceful rain. So let's change gears, shall we? Now I'm going to talk a bit about the things that kept me going. Starting with the online communities that I've become part of, that have improved my life, have kept me smiling and laughing, and uh, sometimes been a sympathetic and helpful ear. First off is Gameplay Nation. Gameplay is a Twitch channel whose author, Dan, lives in Canada. I can always find comfort in hanging out with this community. A plus, I credit Dan as being the reason I bought Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, a game my son and I enjoy immensely even though sometimes we're not all that good at it. Next up would be Jacksepticeye. I don't remember what my first Jacksepticeye video was, but his style appealed to me immediately. He once said, yes I'm loud, yes I curse a lot. I'm Irish. He uploads two videos a day, seven days a week. Usually these are Let's Plays and those are usually loaded with kinetic mad fun. But he's one of the most kind-hearted, genuine people you will find on YouTube. Cole and Marmalade. Now, cats are my favorite beings on the planet. When I stumbled on a Cole and Marmalade's channel a couple of years ago, it quickly became one that Cyrus and I would watch together. Of course, a regular dose of cat cuteness heals the soul, but there's actually, there's more. A bit more than a year ago, Marmalade was diagnosed with cancer. Thankfully, Marmalade beat the cancer and thus far it has shown no sign of recurring. Because Cyrus and I talked about various stages of Marmalade's journey, he became somewhat informed about cancer as a disease and the possible cause of death. And it's because of this that it was easier to bring it up with him when it was time to tell him that his grandma had cancer and that, that she was going to die from it. 
All right, so something happened to the audio. I've got to re-record some stuff, but this has already gone on far too long than it should have. Suffice it to say that those aren't the only online communities that I've become part of and felt home at. There's also Black Nerd, Jeremy Johns, Hannah Hart, Vlog Brothers. Because of Gameplay Nation, I met other great Twitch streamers like Podeman and Spider. And I've also really enjoyed connecting with other small YouTubers, which, you know, brings me to the topic of subscribers. When I first started doing this, I really did not expect to get subscribers outside of, say, immediate family and real-life friends. But my subscriber count does rise from time to time, which is actually really cool. And last but not least, I'm very thankful to my friends and most of my family who have been supportive and helpful. And my biggest thanks goes out to my son, who's an amazing, incredible little kid. And now back to the previously recorded content. And you know what? Never forget that in the dark times, you can always find solace in things like books, comics, various video games. I have a vast collection of geeky, nerdy crap that I've been amassing for the last 20 years or so. So, there you have it. A letter opener. I'll just say very briefly that for the most part, I'm not going to make more serious videos like this. I prefer being happy. In fact, I have this happiness generator inside me that within the last few days, I've been able to restart. It's a powerful engine with enough for more than just me. You've seen some of it in the last videos, and I want to share that with the world. And that means all of you. So that's all I got. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I look forward to seeing you again.